Another day, another atrocity in Taliban-controlled Afghanistan. An Afghan sniper who served alongside British forces said to be gunned down, uh, sorry, hunted down and then executed. Uh, and they apparently did it in front of his family. That's the report now. The Taliban claims their actions will bring security to the Afghan people. Trey Yinks back at his post, Kabul, Afghanistan, again today. Trey. Bill, good morning. We continue to hear these concerning reports about the Taliban targeting people who used to work with foreigners. Today, we visited a prison that used to hold thousands of Taliban fighters, and we spoke to the group about their views on security in Afghanistan. Right now, we are entering the Polisharki prison with the Taliban. When the group entered the Afghan capital, they came into this facility and freed thousands of their fellow fighters. These fighters came from the Logar province, and they said it was a 15-year struggle to take over Afghanistan, and that they're happy. They now control the country, and they say they are bringing security to the Afghan people. As we walk through the prison, we meet Niaz Mohammed Halim, a man who served a four-year sentence at the facility. He's now a top Taliban intelligence official. When asked by Fox News about Americans still stuck in Afghanistan, he responded by saying everyone is safe. He also denied new reports about infighting between senior Taliban leadership. Individual people to top-level officials, everyone obeys the rule of the Taliban emirate. There is no infighting. What we order here in Kabul is implemented in all provinces. That is propaganda of the enemy. It's important to remember when the Taliban says they're bringing security to the Afghan people, that security comes at an extremely high price. The group has started to implement Sharia law across the country, banning music, banning women and men from working in the same places, and also starting executions in more rural parts of the country. Wow. Trey, Tra so that, that's clear. The, the Taliban guards are your guards and your escorts. How do they react to you as a Western reporter coming back into the country? It's extremely interesting to talk to them, Bill, because like any interview, you sit and talk before you get started and try to learn more about your subjects, who they are, where they came from, and what is their life story. And you have these conversations with many of these Taliban fighters, and then suddenly they'll talk about how they killed a number of American troops eight or nine years ago. And it's stunning, I mean, to hear them talk about the fighting. Their value of human life is far lower than many people around the world. They talk about these firefights that they had not only with American forces, but other NATO forces across Afghanistan. And they say they're happy to be controlling the country, but they are looking to leadership that currently right now is speaking with officials in places like Doha, Qatar, to talk about the future. The Taliban wants to be taken seriously by the international community, but they have this very dark past. Yeah. Bill? Did you ask them about women and how they react and treat them? And if so, did they answer it? We didn't talk to these fighters about women, but we spoke with the Taliban spokesperson in Doha a few weeks ago. And basically, the group claims they are going to respect the rights of women, allow them to study at university, and allow them to basically take part in society. But the reality on the ground when you're walking through the streets of Kabul is quite different. There are very few women on the streets here. Those you do, do see are either wearing a hijab or a burqa, and their place in society is not equal. The Taliban spokesperson we talked to claimed that they would be equal, but when you, you are here in Afghanistan, you see that women are considered second-class citizens here, and those Taliban fighters, they're very focused on maintaining security, but human rights and equality is very low on the list for this group. Also fascinating, Bill. and more Daniel. to come on that. Thank you so much, Trey Yingst in Kabul.